The term evolution implies gradual change or transformation from one structure to another. The topic human evolution itself implies that the present-day human beings have been gradually developed from some non-human ancestors millions of years ago. So to say, we are a product of biological evolution, not appeared all of a sudden miraculously. How and when it did happen? This is some of the few questions boggling the mind of common people. An anthropologist gather circumstantial evidences to prove this natural event. And the evidences are paleontological remains, comparative anatomy of the present day uh, apes and men, and so also comparison of the genomic structures of the men and apes. Which of the living animals share closest similarity with men? Everybody will definitely give the same answer, that is, the apes. It is definitely true that mankind share closest similarity with the great apes, and more specifically, chimpanzees. Believe it or not, chimpanzee DNA is 98.8% identical with human. A number of paleontological remains unearthed so far have proven that different types of human had existed on Earth at different stages of geological time periods. These millions of years old fossil remains characteristically exhibit a like extinct humans. These are the basic clues of the investigation on human evolution and paleontological remains provide bulk of the essential information. History of art can be divided into four main eras. They are Archaeozoic, Proterozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. Each of these uh, eras are further divisible into periods and epochs. While traces of life forms appeared on the earth during the Proterozoic, that is around 650 million years ago, traces of existence of human like forms is only 1.8 million years old. The latest geological era, Cenozoic, is divided into two periods. They are Tertiary and Quaternary. Tertiary is known as the period of non-human primates. It is divided into two epochs, Miocene and Pliocene. About 7 million years ago, towards the end of the Miocene, Homo, Pan, Gorilla, that means human, chimpanzee and gorilla, they all belong to a single species, Dryopithecines. These species live in Africa and most likely resemble chimpanzee. And some of them evolved into gorilla, while some of them started walking erect and became humans, while some other developed into chimpanzees. Quaternary period is only 1.8 million years old, and it is known as the period of hominids. This period is further divided into two epochs, Pleistocene and Holocene, and we are now in Holocene. The evolution of man from ape-like ancestry to Homo sapiens was by and large accomplished during the Pleistocene epoch. It has been a taxing exercise of the paleoanthropologist to arrange the fossil fragments into chronological sequence, because most of the remains are pieces of bones and they were discovered from different continents. And piecing them together, these bones remains, and arranging them into a systematic sequence was really a taxing task and it can be compared with the solving of jigsaw puzzle. Because of the remains are mostly fragments, because of these difficulties, 
there have been several problems, but now the remains of the Pleistocene period are arranged into three main stages. They are Australopithecine, Homo erectus, and Neanderthal man. And Neanderthal was succeeded by modern humans uh, as the owner of the Upper Paleolithic culture. Now let us see the paleontological evidences. On February 7, 1925, an Australian anatomist Raymond Dirt first reported in the British scientific weekly Nature about the historic discovery of endocranial cast of a child of about five and six years old from Tong in South Africa. And Raymond Dart named it Australopithecus africanus. That means Southern Ep of Africa. In the 1930s and 40s, Robert Broom and later Broom student John Robinson collected more Australopithecines from Stuck Fountain, Swartrans, and Cromdry. The remains are adult skulls portions of post endocranial skeleton. In the late 1940s, Dart found more remains at Macapan's gut. Thereafter, remains of Australopithecines were discovered from different parts of Africa, China, Java, and Palestine. The exact geological age of the Australopithecine group is not certain. According to Robert Broom, it belongs to the middle Miocene or lower part of upper Pliocene. While most of the paleoanthropologists are of the view that Australopithecines belong to lower Pleistocene age. Australopithecine remains show a good deal of variability. Usually, every discoverer give new specific names to their discovery because of which the genus Australopithecus has a number of species. For the matter of convenience, Australopithecines are now arranged into two groups the gracile Australopithecine and the robust Australopithecines. The gracile Australopithecine includes Australopithecus africanus, Australopithecus anamensis, and Australopithecus afarensis, etc. The robust Australopithecine includes Australopithecus ethiopicus, Australopithecus boise, and Australopithecus robustus, etc. Significant modification in becoming human is erect bipedalism and its associated developments. Bipedal locomotion freed the hands for carrying objects and for making tools. Free forelimb is associated with reduction of the facial prognathism, reduction of canine size, vertical elevation of forehead and ball of the skull so as to enlarge the brain box, shifting of foramen magnum centrally so that the head is properly balanced in erect stains. Without enlarged or developed brain, free hands will be less meaningful. Functionally, foot has also been altered to act as a stable support instead of grasping. For this, big toe is no longer opposable but align with the shortened toes. Foot is used like a prop, landing on the heel and pushing off on the toes, particularly the big toe. Legs are elongated to increase the length of the strides. Vertical column assumes S shape with four curves to straighten the trunk instead of the two curves in the apse. Pelvic girdle becomes funnel sap instead of cylindrical sap so as to support the sub organs of the body. These major structural changes that are required for erect bipedalisms are seen in the available fossil remains of skull, vertebral column, and pelvic bone of 
Australopithecus sinst. Homo habilis represents a hominid stage of evolution between Australopithecus and Homo erectus. The fossil remains of Homo habilis were first discovered in 1962 by Leakey at Old Dubai Ghost. Later, many Homo habilis remains and tools have been recovered from Old Dubai Ghost in Tanzania and Ed Kubifora in Kenya by the Leakeys in the 1960s and 70s. Further discoveries have been made at Oldubai Gores in 1980s by Don Johnson and Tim White. Compared with the Australopithecines, Homo habilis had a significantly larger brain and reduced molars and premolars. They belong to the lower Pleistocene. Homo erectus lived between 1.7 and 300,000 years ago. That was during Middle Pleistocene. The first fossil of Homo erectus was discovered in 1891 by a Dutch anatomist, Dr. Eugene Dubois from Trinil in Java, that is in Indonesia. He named it Pithecanthropus erectus, meaning each Erect ape man. Pithecus means ape, anthropos means man. Remains of Pithecanthropus types were also reported from Jokudian, that is southwest of Peking, which is now known as Beijing in China. Uh, it was sometimes in 1926, 27, and 29 and Professor Davidson Black of Peking Medical College named it Sinanthropus pekinensis, that means Chinese man of Peking. While the Java remains are estimated to be about one million years old, Peking man seems to be less than one million years. It is now re resolved that both Java and Peking fossils belong to the same species, Homo erectus. Further discoveries of Homo erectus were made from China, Africa, and Europe. And it was the first hominid species to be widely distributed in the old world. The evolution of Homo erectus reflects a continuation of general evolutionary trends. The brain continued to expand increasing more than a third than the early Homo. Homo erectus is thought to have developed the use of fire. This is supported by evidence of heart from a site at Terra Amata in France. This species is also credited for development of skilled hunting techniques. Homo erectus developed a very symmetrically shaped stone axe, which would have allowed efficient processing of animal carcasses. These tools are known as Etulian. This typological name has been derived from a site in Saint Etule in northern France. Between about 100,000 and 40,000 years ago, there was a form of early modern man, Homo neanderthalensis, whose brain size often exceeded ours. The name Neanderthal man is given after the location of the earliest discovery of this species in 1856 in Neander Valley in Germany. Thereafter, a number of specimens belonging to Homo neanderthalensis have been found in many sites in Europe and the Middle East. Skeleton remains saw that Neanderthal man was massively built and very muscular with distinct brow ridges and low forehead. 
On the basis of certain characters and localities of discovery, Neanderthal remains have been grouped into two types, conservative and progressive. The conservative Neanderthals, also known as the classic Neanderthals, are mostly representatives of Western Europe. They are believed to have specialized for coal adaptation and most probably extinct. The progressive Neanderthals show more generalized characters which give the group a closer relationship with the modern Homo sapiens. Neanderthal man was a skilled hunter and possessed sophisticated kit of stone flag tools known as Mausterian tools, with which he certainly made other bamboo implements like spear. He lived on to the last ice age in Europe, which began about 40,000 years ago, and adapted well to the cold conditions. He used caps as dwellings and adept at fire making and probably cooking. A clear indication that Neanderthal men had an almost modern mentality is provided by deliberate burials in some rock shelters he inhabited. At Shanidar cave in Iraq, flowers had been laid by the head of the corpse, while at other sites, red ochre had been scattered on the body suggesting a symbolic representation of life. According to new DNA study, Neanderthal DNA is 99.7% identical with modern man. The study uncovered genetic evidence that modern humans interbred with their Neanderthal neighbors who mysteriously died out 30,000 years ago. Apparently, Mating took place in the Middle East shortly after modern humans had left Africa, not in Europe, as has been long suspected. A pinky bone was discovered in 2008 from the Deshinova cave in the Altai mountain, South Siberia. Researchers estimate the age of the pinky bone, named X woman, to be between 30,000 and 40,000 years old. At that time, Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans also live in that region of Siberia, deep in the Altai mountains. Swante Pabo and colleague Johannes Kraus of the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, uh, who discovered the specimen and sequenced DNA from its mitochondria are hesitant to call it a new species. The bone's genetic signature contained many distinct features compared with those of the remains of Neanderthals or modern humans. Ex woman's mitochondria differ from a human's at nearly 400 DNA letters. Neanderthals so only have as many differences. Indeed, DNA analysis suggests that the bone came from the line of the so-called hominin that last shared a common ancestor with Neanderthals and modern humans about one million years ago. However, anthropologists say that Neanderthals and modern humans last shared a common ancestors about 50,000 years ago. This pushes ex woman about twice as distant from humans on the evolutionary tree as from Neanderthals. Our knowledge about the antiquity of Homo sapiens sapiens is constantly updated in the light of the new discoveries. Some of the oldest remains of Homo sapiens sapiens 
have been found at Jebel Kwafze in Israel dating back over to 90,000 years. The specimen, old man of cro magnon in France, who was discovered by Walkman in 1868, is dated sometime around 30,000 years ago. Modern humans are distinct physically from all early Homo sapiens. There is no more distinct brow ridges. The skull is more rounded and thinner. Forehead becomes vertical and a prominent chin is developed. The average brain size is about 1,350cc. Homo sapiens sapiens is the only hominid species to produce art. In France, the appearance of modern humans coincides with that of a much more sophisticated stone tool technology which included pine awls, engravers, with which delicate bone implements like needles could be made. In the rock shelters of Dordogne, there is an abrupt replacement of Neanderthal occupation by that of modern men about 30,000 years ago, giving rise to the suspicion that Neanderthal may have been exterminated. Excavation in the caves of the Mount Carmel in Israel have revealed a succession of habitation layer in some of which the advanced flint tools of modern man are mixed with the Mausterian tools of Neanderthal man. Study on human evolution have been based on interpretation of human physical remains, that is bone remains and cultural remains. It is now possible to find out molecular evidences through the study of preserved human mitochondrial DNA. The molecular evidence, if assessed cautiously, provides a date for the origin of our own species and also suggests likely evolutionary relationship between different human groups. However, the molecular evidence does not provide a picture of what our ancestors look like or how they adapted physically and behaviorally to their seasonally fluctuating environments. African continent is said to be the cradle of human evolution. There were, of course, different views about the place of human evolution. By far, the recent African origin, so to say, out of Africa hypothesis is the most accepted theory of human evolution. Molecular data have suggested that our species originated in Africa very recently, just 100,000 to 200,000 years ago, and thereafter, migration to the rest of the world took place.